in brass. Treading water that they drown. My head on a swivel. Yeah. It's only really my surroundings. Hello and welcome to our YouTube only smash content. I'm your host, Michael Royer. You can find me on Twitter at Dynasty Dad FF. Joining me as always is my main man, Snoog. How you doing today, brother? I'm doing good, Dad. I'm excited. I mean, this is the episode we've been waiting for, telling you kind of the landing spots we love because that does matter, especially when they get into the hands of, of those elite offensive minded coaching staffs. That's what we want. We want those guys to be maximized to their to their skill sets and get used how they thrive on the football field. So we're oh, going to give sure. you our, our 10 favorite guys here. Yeah, we're excited about this. We've been doing YouTube only content as well. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Today, what we want to talk about is rookie landing spots that we love. For me, my first guy is J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy, we wanted to go to the Vikings. You know, a lot of people had him as their 108. He goes to the Vikings and people aren't moving him up. I'm getting him at 108 everywhere. And you shouldn't. I mean, he's got a rushing floor. He's got an elite level offense where he's going to have, you know, Jefferson, Hawkinson, Addison, Aaron Jones. I mean, this is an offense that I think is going to be high powered. We could see J.J. McCarthy have a top 15 rookie season, which is just going to catapult his dynasty value. So if you can get him at 108, absolutely smash. He's my 105. You're up, buddy. Yeah, I mean, this seems cliche to say, but we've been pounding this drum for years now. I feel comfortable enough that I can say that I'm fully on the Xavier Worthy, Worthy train before the landing spot of the Kansas City Chiefs. He's now in the hands of Andy Reid, who was thriving with Deshaun Jackson back in his Philly days and who was thriving with Tyree Kill in his Kansas City days. They were desperately in need of one of those guys again, and they got their guy. They traded up into the first round from pick 32 to 28 with the Bills, paid up a little bit, took their guy Xavier Worthy. The reason why I love this landing spot, not only because he's tied to Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, which should already knock your socks off, it's the fact that he caught 46% of his passes behind the line of scrimmage or from screens in college football. And the Chiefs deploy an extreme amount of pre-snap motion, screens, bubble screens, behind the line of scrimmage plays, this is where Worthy is going to thrive. Like we saw Rashi Rice thrive in that role last year, and that was not what he was good at in college. Like this was a contested catch jump ball guy. Guess what? He's suspended for half the season. Worthy is a bigger or a much faster, quicker, more explosive version of Rashi Rice after the catch. 7.3 yards after catch per reception, with which is a ridiculous career number. He was up in the eights at some point in a, in a single season. I mean, this guy is going to absolutely light the world on fire when he finally settles in and Reed gets his hands on him and gets things settled. We saw in the Eagles Chiefs Super Bowl. Sorry, Dad, to bring this up. I'm giving you nightmares. But we saw what Sky Moore and Kadarius Tooney were doing in those like whip routes, those design plays. Guess what? That's going to be Xavier Worthy now. And not to mention his 4 one speed winning downfield. This guy checks every box, is like one of the best true freshman producers ever. Power five player, draft him. He's my 109 in Superflex. My next guy is Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks, for most of the process, was my RB1. He got the draft capital. He goes to Carolina, and a lot of people are like, oh, he's going to be behind Chuba Hubbard. That's a good thing for early because, he, you know, if he avoids the IR, this is a guy that I think talent wise will be a top 12 dynasty running back because of the landscape. Very safe in this area at that 111 to 201. I'm smashing that all day long. Nothing better than winning your championship and then getting another stud running back to finish off your roster at 112. So give me Jonathan Brooks to Carolina. Love the spot. Just got to be a little patient. Exactly. I love that too. I'm going to go with something that is definitely probably a little bit of a hot take to some, but some people will probably be on board with me. I'm going to go with Roma Dunze. Dude went ninth overall to the Bears. He was the reason why... The Washington Huskies made it as far as they did to the national championship. This guy had 1,600 plus yards. One of the best reception perception profiles we've ever seen. Thing lit up green like a Christmas tree. Natural separator. I love this film. Wins in every contested catch situation. His 50-50 balls are like 80-20. He has the best hands in the class. He's a very good route runner. Very natural separator. He has one of the safest profiles in as all rookies do in this class just for like what he is like he's guaranteed to be at least like a good wide receiver too in fantasy football 
Barry Drake, London like Michael Thomas upside. I love it. Tied to an elite quarterback, Kale Williams coming in. They paired these guys. They took them one and eight or one and nine. Like this is like Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase light. I'm all over this value. I mean, you can get them at the 107, 108 in some leagues. I have myself. If he is falling, please draft him. I don't care if you have DJ Moore. I don't care if you think the landing spot. He's not JSN. JSN went in the 20s. JSN was a slot guy. Roma Dunze is an alpha X, beats press coverage at a high level. He He's not going to be the odd man out. It's going to be Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen's going to be like that slot Z guy. It's going to be the Rome and DJ Moore show for years to come. You can't beat getting a wide receiver one or like a low end wide receiver one that's tied to an elite young rookie quarterback, especially if they were drafted together. So I'm all over that value. So you're, you're hitting the wide receivers. I'm going to hit another running back here who I think also has, you know, top 12 to 15 dynasty running back potential. And that's Trey Benson. Trey Benson goes to the Cardinals where James Conner, you know, hasn't been the beacon of health. You know, last year he only missed four games, but he's been someone who's missed time. I think Trey Benson is going to come in, be a 1B and be the eventual starter here with, with James Conner getting up there in age. You know, I think this is the last year we see of, of Conner being a bell cow type running back. Trey Benson is going to take over. He's a guy that you and I have had top three throughout the entire process. Trey Benson is a guy that at 201, at 202, you should be hitting that smash except button. Yeah. We told you the strength of this class. The NFL confirmed the strength of this class. It's wide receiver. I'm going to go with my wide receiver six. Lad McConkey goes to the Chargers in the early second round. They traded up for him. He fits in like a glove in this offense. Likely a run-heavy play-action style offense. This is a kid that was an elite athlete at the combine. 4-3-9 speed. He's going to win across the middle of the field. He's going to win out of the slot. He's going to win in the Z. He's going to win downfield. Win in screen game after the catch. He fits this offense better than anybody could have. Like, this is a match made in heaven. He's going to be Justin Herbert's wide receiver one, and that's kind of crazy to say. But we saw how Herbert fed Keenan Allen, a guy that wins in the short areas and the intermediate areas. Good separator, great route runner. Lad McConkey screams that. Insane value in that, like, 111, 112. And I've even seen him fall to that early second round range. So if you see him fall, work those phones like Jordan Belfort. Yeah, and I've been I've been taking myself from those mid seconds and moving up to the late first for the three of these guys because you and I've had them at wide receiver four, five, and six between Worthy, Brian Thomas, and McConkey the entire process. Those guys all hit a guy that I wasn't expecting to really start to be a guy that liked the landing spot. But I mean, we're talking Keon Coleman going to the Bills in the early second round, and yeah, we didn't love the tape where we were at, but. He's not an elite level separator, but man, the guy has ball skills. He can go out those 50-50 balls with Josh Allen. If you told me Keon Coleman finished as the you know wide receiver two this season in points per game or wide receiver three, I would not bat an eye. I think him landing in Buffalo, I'm comfortably getting him in that 203-204 range. I don't want to move him above some of these other guys, but I've seen him fall as, five, as far as 205-206. Again, going to hit that smash accept button all day because the opportunity is ripe for Keon Coleman. You go keep paving the way with these wide receivers, man. I'm going to go with a, a first round wide receiver that has been falling to that 206 to 209 range in most rookie drafts. Ricky Pearsall, another guy, great separator, great after the catch, elite athlete at the combine, jumped out of the gym, 441 speed. A little concerned about the profile, a fifth year guy, never had a thousand yards, a little bit concerned on that production, but he's in the hands of Kyle Shanahan now in a, in a very pass heavy. Great pro style offense that he's going to slide in like a glove. If Ayuk or Debo gets traded, I mean, he his play style is like Brandon Ayuk's. Like he's that elite rut runner. He can separate great. He has unbelievable hands. Great athlete. If I can get that guy two hundred seven to two hundred nine in a, in, a, in this type of offense, I'm all over that value. And if you guys are new to our content, this is where Snoog's always in on on all the players. His player evaluations are on point. Mine, I'm always looking at values. I'm trying to say, how can I draft this guy, flip that guy? The biggest guy for me to draft and flip right now is Michael Penix Jr. And I didn't love him during the process. I, I said he's a two of light, but he goes top 10. Snoop, you can't argue when a guy gets drafted that early and people are telling themselves the narrative that Kirk Cousins is gonna start for three years, but Cousins goes down, Penix gets in there. He goes from right now, he's going 204. I got him as late as 208. The minute Kirk Cousins gets injured or struggles and Penix starts, he's worth a first. So this is that area in Dynasty where you can say, you know what? I'm buying him at 205. 
I'm flipping him for a 25 first, just like I was doing with Will Levis. Make sure you guys get in on that process because once we get to 205, and I like Purcell, I like Leggett, I like some of these guys, but I think Michael Penix Jr. is going to give you the biggest return of investment. ROI is huge. Process over results, baby. You're up. Absolutely. And, and I'm going to take things outside of the first and second round of rookie drafts. I'm going to go with the guy that would have been the wide receiver four in this class if you did not look at film and you only took analytics into account in production. Troy Franklin. I mean, he's paired up. I know he went fourth round. I don't know why. I thought he was going to be a round two guy. He went fourth round, but he's paired up with his college QB, who he just did wonders with. 1,300 plus yards, set the Oregon record, 14 touchdowns. He was a big part of that success, and he was a big part of Bo Nix's Bo Nix finally figuring it out at Oregon. Mm -hmm. Like Bo Nix sucked at Auburn. He was terrible. And then his past two years, he was great at Oregon with Troy Franklin. They did wonders together. They're paired up again. I mean, 3.0 plus yards per out run, very high career rate on yards per out run, great yards per team pass attempt numbers, checks every box analytically. Production wise was great. Wins downfield well, has great speed, controls the speed well, good route runner. Very great value there in that in that third round, late second round range. And then Javon Baker, another guy, checks every box analytically, great on film. He was one of my favorite guys on film to watch. He has that like tenacious George Pickens style, like elite body control, makes every catch, has a crazy catch radius, can win downfield. And he was also very effective after the catch as well. His numbers were phenomenal, 3.00 plus yards per run in 2023, 3.00 plus yards per team pass attempt in 2023. Led the class in yards per reception in 2023. There's Alabama recruit, four-star guy, 6'1", 202, like checks every box you want. Now he's paired up in a wide open wide receiver room there. He's saying all this stuff. Like I make people in wheelchairs stand up. Let's see it, Javon, because I believe you, but let's see you prove it to the world. And my last guy is Blake Corum. Blake Corum goes to the Rams offense, I think Blake Corum is going to really eat into Kyron Williams year one. And there is a, you know, we've seen this before where someone doesn't have draft capital. They have a good season. They go in and they invest a third round draft pick in Blake Corum. They believe in the talent. I believe in the talent. I think he rises up in value very easily in the first year. So again, make sure you guys subscribe, hit that subscribe button for our YouTube. We're on Apple's iTunes. We're on everything. Check us out. Smash accept. Thanks again for tuning in and enjoy the process.